This is the start of a new series. Not a weekly series, but a series that will release a new episode every several weeks for the next several months. Originally, this began as a few separate video ideas that I realized had a common thread, so I said, hey, let's just make this thing a series. So what's this series about? You're a real blue flame special, aren't you, son? Like most of us, I love action scenes, and I spend way too much time thinking about them. But not because they're cool or badass or have rad fucking explosions and shit, but because action is the purest form of cinema. An action scene is entirely about visual storytelling. Sure, there might be some dialogue, and obviously sound plays a big role, but above all else, it is about telling a story through visuals. Because look, action scenes go right back to the beginning of cinema. Before there was sound or dialogue, there were action scenes. At their best, action scenes can be transcendent, the most visceral, thrilling form of cinema. And when they're bad, they can be absolutely maddening. The point of this series is to explore why. So to start, I want to ask a question. What is a perfect action scene? Leave it to me, I'll get the this is a perfect action scene. It's the climactic chase scene from Nick Park's short film, The Wrong Trousers. It does everything a good action scene should do. It's exciting, it's surprising, and it tells a story. Well done, we did it, ha <laughs> ha! So what is that story? On a macro level, it's pretty simple. Feathers McGraw tries to escape with a diamond, Wallace and Gromit try to stop him, finally, they do. But when we zoom in, there's a much more complicated story being told. In just over two minutes, there are over two dozen story beats. There's this famous video of Trey Parker and Matt Stone, the creators of South Park, explaining storytelling. But we can take these beats, which are basically the beats of your outline, and if the words and then belong between those beats, you're basically. You got, you got something pretty boring. What should happen between every beat that you've written down is either the word therefore or but. And that's entirely what this scene is. Gromit is trying to catch feathers, but he uses a gun to open an escape door. Therefore, Gromit diverts the train onto a new track. Wallace lands on the train, but Feathers shoots his car onto a separate track, but he catches up and takes the gun away, but he crashes into a wall. Most of these connected beats, the changes in the character's fortune, are called reversals. Here's Shane Black, maybe the best action screenwriter of all time, explaining reversals. I think reversals in a story are so important. Uh, the, the example I use is called the haystack game. And you're t telling a story about him to a friend. He says, well, he was, fell off the plane. And the friend says, oh my god, that's bad. He says, no, that's, that's good, because he had a parachute. He says, oh, well, that's good. He says, well, no, that's bad, because the parachute didn't open. Oh my god, well that's terrible. No, 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 that's good because he had a reserve chute. Oh, well that's good. No, that's bad. The reserve chute didn't open either. The point is, every time you give something, you take it away, and you twist things constantly. You go, oh my god, they're safe. Oh, well, they're not safe. Oh, but they're gonna make it. Oh, but they're not gonna make it. There's good news, but then there's bad news. There's bad news, but then there's good news. In this scene, there are 11 reversals. That's about one every 10 seconds. Wallace catches up with the net, but the net gets caught. Gromit almost catches feathers, but he uncouples his car from the train. The track is about to run out, but Gromit grabs a box of spare track and makes a new one. The whole scene operates like this. Almost every five seconds, there is a new beat, a new reversal, a new change in the character's fortune. And another reason this scene works so well is that every element it introduces gets paid off. The train itself creates countless different scenarios. Divergent tracks, separate cars, track running out. It's constantly morphing and creating new dynamics. It puts the scene in perpetual motion. The action can't stop because the train doesn't. Early on, it introduces the notion of Feathers using his odd shape to escape, which in the end is how he gets captured. And the wrong trousers themselves are planted in the scene right at the start and return to pay off in the climactic moment. Here's Shane Black again, talking about the satisfaction of a good setup and payoff in storytelling. You hid your setup, so it seemed like it was there just for the moment. Then later you pay it off and you go, oh, the best response you can have to a payoff in a thriller is someone goes, oh right, I forgot, of course, I should have thought of that. So now that we've explored how this scene works on the page, how is it actually executed? Well, very, very clearly. Almost the entire scene plays out in wide shots, where we can see the full character as well as the train. 
Close-ups are only used for emphasis and to draw the audience's attention to important things. The train will always be moving in the same direction across the screen. So here it's moving right to left, and we can see that Feathers is at the front end of the train and Gromit around the middle. Since the primary drama of the scene is Gromit trying to catch up with Feathers, it's important that we always know where they are in relation to one another. And that's achieved by making the shots and geography of the scene extremely clear. When it comes to action, clarity is key. So yeah, this might be a silly scene about a dog chasing a penguin, but it's also an important lesson that you don't need violence, property damage, or CGI to make a great action scene. Just good, clear storytelling. And honestly, a gun-wielding penguin doesn't hurt either. Hello guys, thank you so much for watching. Now this video is brought to you today by Audible. Audible has a huge unmatched selection of audiobooks and original audio shows, news, comedy, etc. And you can get a 30-day trial plus a free audiobook if you sign up today at audible.com slash patrickhw. My personal audiobook recommendation is The Disaster Artist by Greg Sestero, who also reads it, and Tom Bazell. It is the insane true story of weirdo auteur Tommy Wiseau and The Making of the Room, one of the most amazingly terrible movies of all time, told by his best friend and co-star in the movie. Now, what's amazing about this book is it is hilarious and completely nuts, but also a surprisingly moving story about Hollywood and pursuing dreams of movie stardom, even if you don't really know how movies work. Audible is the perfect way to get motivated in the morning and ready for the day ahead. This book is so compelling and surprising that you will be excited to get ready for your commute just so you can listen to more of it. I promise you will not be disappointed. Plus, you gotta check it out before the movie opens in December. If you do, let me know what you think. So again, go to audible.com slash patrickhw for your 30-day trial plus free audiobook. Now, if you like these videos and wanna help us make more, check out the Patreon. You can follow me on all those social media links, and I will see you back here next Wednesday.